Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the DJI Mini 4 Pro. We're doing a full-on flight test review today. I got the Flymore combo in case you guys were wondering. If you haven't seen my unboxing video or the whole series, I'll go ahead and have the series pop up here. It'll also be down in the description down below. And also where you can get the Mini 4 Pro. The unboxing was kind of cool because it showed some differences in between the 3 and the 4. We're going to put this thing up in the air and really just test everything we can possibly fit in three batteries. So this is just as a warning, this is going to be a long video, but my videos just show how these things actually work. So let's get started with the Mini 4 Pro. All right, guys, so the great thing about the Flymore combo is you get this bag and everything's in here. You can see how small this bag is, you know, it's just tiny. And that's the great thing about the Mini 4 Pro is you can actually just kind of fit this in a baggy pocket if you wanted to. I got the RC2 controller, which has the screen in it. And let's just go ahead and set this thing up super quick. Uh, I don't even have a launch pad because I want to just launch from my hand, right? And just see how easy it is. They finally have a little propeller latch system on there to kind of keep your propellers from flailing around because as you can see with nothing on there they get kind of loose. All we need to do is just quickly take off the gimbal cover. I also have the ND filters and that wide angle lens for the Mini 4 Pro so I'm going to test that too. This has got the latest update as of September 26th and then just set up you know the control sticks. This stuff is kind of redundant but whoops <laughs> That's what you got to be careful of is dropping these things. They don't give us an extra set anymore in the Flymore combo, which I don't know why, uh, because I've actually lost these a few times. You know, I'd recommend DJI if you're listening, just include like a lens cleaning cloth to clean the screens and then, you know, your cameras that you have on drones and all the sensors because you want to keep all these sensors clean. So especially since this has 360 obstacle avoidance and tracking, uh, you want to make sure all these little sensors are clean. The Mini 4 now has kind of like the sensors that the Air 3 was using, the upgraded sensors, and it's got two in the front and two in the back, and they're wide angle, so we're going to see how this thing performs. It's supposed to not hit any obstacles, and it doesn't really matter what you turn on first or second. I'm just going to turn on the controller first because it takes a while to boot up, and then we'll go ahead and turn on the drone itself. So since it's already kind of calibrated out of the box just maybe try to keep it level while it's booting up you don't really have to um, put it on a drone mat or have a super level surface as long as it's not like super at an angle when it's booting up right just try to keep it as flat as possible the great thing about the rc2 there we go is it has screen recording on it which is great so i'll have the screen up and i wanted to quickly show you how much memory this controller has it has quite a bit built in without even putting a sd card in it this is actually an android tablet right here I'm gonna go hit storage and show you what it comes with and what's available so it is a 32 gigabyte built-in storage without even putting a card in here and there's 14 0.08 available. I do have a high capacity 64 gigabyte card in here for the recording on the camera. So let's launch this thing. We do have 23 satellites up at the top right of the screen on the controller. Just clicking this automatic launch and then just pressing and holding until the propellers start to spin up. There we go. Awesome. So that sucker is ready to go. You can hear how quiet that is, man. See those little red bars where it's showing you where it thinks the obstacles are all the way around it? Let's just take a quick little look at this thing. It's so quiet, man. It actually seems slightly quieter than the Mini 3 Pro. Maybe the angle of the propeller or the angle of the arms and the propellers is slightly making it a little quieter but i can barely hear that thing man so super stealth that's for sure if this beeping bothers you guys you can go remember how i swiped down on the top a couple times you can actually turn down the volume on the controller you see the slider let me just give you a close-up look of this thing flying it's just locked in there look at that it's locked so steady i'm gonna pull it down just a little so you can kind of see it there's literally no wind right here in the park today. In the south, I'm in the southwest. 
So I'm not in Hawaii right now. For you guys that know, I used to live in Hawaii. But there's that thing, man. It's just, just flying really quiet. And that's what DJI is kind of known for is their drones are super just locked in. With the GPS, it's using those bottom sensors to kind of lock itself. A little bit of breeze hits it, right? But it still is trying to keep itself stable. So anyway, guys, hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, yes, I'm still wearing my slippers. As you can see, uh, Hawaii habits that are hard to shake, right? But it is a really nice day here and it's, you know, maybe about 70, 80 degrees, so no problem. So let's get started on the Mini 4. Let's do it. Make sure I'm in normal mode, just right here on the controller in the center. And let's just do some flying. I do have the bypass on for the obstacle avoidance. Oh, I didn't even start recording yet. Let's start recording. So this button over here on the right, hit and record. So now we're recording in uh, 4K 30, right? So let's start off with um, doing some obstacle avoidance on myself, okay? I'm gonna go down like chest level and just go straight into me here. And let's see how this bypass works. Fantastic. So you see what happened there? I'm going to show you real quick what it is on in the settings. You see how you have your flight assistance, right? And obstacle avoidance. So you can either have it on bypass, brake, or off. I like to leave it on bypass uh, just in case you want to just keep going and don't want to have difficult with obstacles at stopping and stuff. I just keep it on bypass. It seems to do very well so far on this one. I'm gonna pull back and see how those rear sensors will avoid me, okay? Here we go. So I've never done this before. All I did was a quick little flight up my house just to make sure it was working. So I'm pulling back on the controller. And look at that, just like all their other obstacle avoidance drones, it just went up and over on its own. So fantastic. Let's get close again, right here maybe a little farther away. Now let's do the sideways obstacle avoidance. So I'm just turning it to the side. So the side is facing me directly. And I just want, want to go sideways into me and see how that bypass and avoidance is. So I want to make sure I'm right in its path and I'm going to push left on the right stick to make it roll towards me. Look at that, it just, it just went up and away. That was great. Now we need to do the right-hand side test of it. So right at chest level. I know you can't see me in the mini camera, but you should see it in my hat cam here. And let's press to the right. Sun's coming out now. So it's I'm right in this path. And it chose to fly around me to the right that time. So obstacle avoidance is working very, very well. Um, I haven't really done this before, but let me try it. I'm gonna go way low on the ground. I'm gonna put my hand above it. I've never done this before. We'll do one in the tree there. Put my hand above it and I'm gonna push up. It's not going up. I'm all the way up on the stick. It's trying to get around my hand, but it's like, oh, what do I do? I'm gonna try and move my hand to the left a little. There, see that? So the upward obstacle avoidance is working fantastic. Uh, and the bypass, I remember the bypass on the Air 3, it was a little hit or miss. It has a hard time finding a hole. So let's see how they improved it on this one once we get over there to the trees and try to do some other obstacle avoidance. So guys, I'm recording in 4K 30, right? Let me show you how it looks. I'm just gonna go full speed forward here. That camera is just beautiful. Of course, it's nice and green grass right, right now at the ending of summer. Full stick to the left, remember when we're in normal mode. And I'm just gonna keep flying towards me and we'll test out this obstacle avoidance again. And I'm kind of in the shadow and it chose to go right over me that time, nice. That was all automatic, all I was doing was pushing forward. So bring her on down. Looks like as I'm flying forward and I'm pulling down on the left stick for elevation, 
It doesn't want to go lower than 3.6 feet. Of course, when you are off the stick, let's try that real quick. I'm gonna let off right now. Watch that stabilized video. Didn't even look like it moved when I just stopped it. So as I was going forward, this is as high as it wants to come down if I just pull straight down on the stick. But if I pull down when it stopped, of course you can land it, right? And that's as far down as it wants to go. Basically it says zero feet, but that's as far down as it wants to go. It's about a foot and a half off the ground. If you hold this down, it will land. Let's see if we can bypass the landing and push up. It's gonna land, I don't wanna land, I push up. There we go, so all that stuff is working great. So let's see our speeds, guys. It's gonna fly slower when it's close to the ground. I'm gonna get her up here and let's just fly directly this way. Let's see how fast our maximum speed is in normal mode. So there we go, 20, about 25, 25, 26. Wow, it keeps going faster and faster. 27. Okay, so it wants to go maybe 27-ish, pulling directly back on the forward stick. Keep an eye on that camera too, guys, how it's doing through this video and with all the movements I'm making on the stick. Yeah, about 27. So we're gonna get 27 in normal mode. Let's switch this button to sport. Now I'm getting a slight breeze, maybe five from this direction. And you can see how it's gonna fight to stay still in a little bit of breeze and start wobbling. But the great thing is that camera is just gonna keep it rock solid video. You know what I mean? So look at the drone shaking, but look at the video, man. Even if I pull on this thing, you see how it just fights? I'm just pushing on it. And look at that video as I push on it. Not even a hiccup. Wow. Getting really good at stabilization, that's for sure. Sport, full speed up. Didn't try this in normal, but we'll try it. 11 miles per hour. Okay. And sport, straight out. Let's just go straight over to that um, factory. Oh, check this out too, guys. Man, they put an H on the screen. That's great. So max speed and sport, we in about 33, 34. Okay, check this out. I'm gonna move the drone. You see that little H on the very bottom? That's awesome. People were asking for that. So it's showing you where your home point is with that little yellow H as I turn the drone now my home point's on the right side, it was on the bottom. That's way cool. Oh, neat, so they made it just like the Avada. You see that home point there? I love that. So that's an update. I haven't seen that before, that's great. All right, so we know how fast it can go in sport, vertically and horizontally. I'm gonna switch back into normal and I did want to see how fast it goes up and down in normal. Bring her down while they're coming home. Man, I love that little H there. You know, it's just convenient for manual flying around you. All right, let's get right overhead and then we'll bring her down super quick. Okay, let's see how this camera stabilizes if I bring the gimbal all the way down with the left roller. I'm just pulling it all the way down. This is with no ND filters on the drone, guys. So pulling straight down. Actually, let's push up first. 11 miles per hour, so same as sport. Pulling down, 11 miles per hour. And that camera looks so solid, man. That was cool. Around 25 feet, it saw the ground with the sensors and it slowed down a bit. Oh, it even has its drone shadow. I remember seeing that from the Avada. Look at this. You see on the grass, it's, it's um, digitally putting its own shadow on the ground, that's neat. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what you could use that for, but neat nonetheless. I'm gonna shake it really hard left and right with the right thumbstick, watch this, and just watch the camera. Look how stable it's keeping that camera. Interesting, it's going forward on its own, that was weird. Maybe I was pushing forward a bit, I don't know. 
But look at that drone just wham in sport. This crazy bank angles. And that video is just saying so still. That's awesome. Cinema mode. Okay, this is if you just want to get really slow, you know, cinematic filming. Let's go punch up. So only four and a half miles per hour on its vertical. It's as fast as you can go. Full throttle down. Ah, three, three to three and a half. So you're gonna be in this mode if you don't wanna really speed around to a destination. You just gonna wanna get really slow footage. Bring her on down and let's just, let me show you how this one flies. Full speed forward. And it really slows down the turning. So I have my stick all the way to the right. Look how slow it's going. So we're 5.6 miles per hour. Let's see if it hits me here. Woo! Avoided. Let's try one more little figure eight here. So you guys get a feel of the video. And I'll try to hit myself again with this bypass. Let's see if it goes around me. Right into me. Now, even if I try to control it into me, I tried to just run into myself by keeping it pushing left. It just skirted around me on its own. So bypass is working very well in this instance. Nice. I wanna go a little higher. It's only going seven and a half miles an hour close to the ground here. Let's punch it up. And I'm just watching the screen here. I love that little home icon. Max speed at height, 13 and a half in cinematic mode. Okay, guys? Cool, man. That's great. What's our battery life left? 53% is here on the top, kind of right towards the middle of the screen. 53% battery in that little kind of green circle. And it says we have like 19-ish um, minutes left to fly. So let's come back down. I want to see how high the gimbal can go up. Walk over to it here. Usually the gimbal is like around 60 degrees. Let's see what it is here. Pushing up or to the right on the left roller here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Is that 60? Wow, that looks higher than 60, but that's 60 degrees there. Just pointed straight up. And that will adjust as you fly forward the extent. So watch this. So see on the right of the screen, right over here, you see how there's that degree percentage column, 60, that pops up when I push the, the left trigger. Watch when I fly forward. So do you see that? So it went down to like 36. So it pulled that camera down so it wouldn't hit its maximum extents. So you may get that once in a while when you're trying to like point up and fly and do all that stuff. Well guys, I think it's time to kind of walk it through these trees on this battery and let's fly through some trees and stuff and test this obstacle avoidance. All right, I kind of want to see what it will do if I fly straight into this big like Russian oak or whatever this is. So watch the camera. It's turning to the left, it's going up looking for a place. And that's where it's just gonna stop. I'm full stick forward and it cannot find a hole. So it's stopping there, okay? So that's the kind of stuff where the bypass won't even work. And let's, let's punch it up to the canopy here. I'm still in cinematic, or no, I'm in normal mode, no, actually. I'm not gonna do a fast punch, but just a slight push up. Let's see what it does. It's thinking. So now I'm full stick up. So it just doesn't know what to do with this foliage here. It doesn't see a space. Let's inch it out, but at least it's not gonna hit it, right? Inch it out here to right on the edge of this and let's push up. Oh, it's trying. It's like inching. There it goes. Okay, it did that on its own. All right, so there is a tolerance Right, let's go back a little bit. Bring that camera down. Man, the grass is so lush here today. I haven't done a review here for a while. So 
Canopy right there, right? Let's see if it will kind of bypass on the way down on the edge of this. Full stick down. Yep, so I move forward. So there's a threshold. One more time. And I want to be more in the canopy. Let's just see what it does. Kind of in the middle front of the tree. Full stick down. Yeah. So those downward sensors sure do have good avoidance. Seems like better than the top as far as bypassing stuff. What a great feature. So check this out. I'm gonna go over this fence. I'm gonna get into this little nook that's kind of like way in here under the canopy, okay? And then I'm gonna try to hit return to home. Let's just try this right here. And I'm gonna hit return to home. Let's see if it can, it knows what to do to get out of here. Forward, left. See, that's fantastic. The Air 3, when I tested it, it's gonna find its way home now. That's great. Oh, check that out. It also has a graphic on the screen. Do you see that? So this is new as well. It's showing you the graphic of where it's gonna land. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Just gonna press X on it. You can also press the uh, hardware button there. So guys, they have really improved this even since the Air 3 is what I wanted to say. I think I said Mavic, but even the Mavic 2. You saw how this thing is using all of its sensors, its 360 sensors to go forward and when it finds a hole, go up. So when you're punching up in canopy, that's too cluttered. Apparently it just doesn't want to go anywhere. But at least when it's in automated mode, it's going forward if there's a hole and then it's seeking a hole in the canopy. So that's awesome, man. Love that. So we got 33% left. We still got 11 and a half minutes. So let's do a couple more things, guys. Um, do we want to start going into tracking or do we want to take some photos? I want to go take some photos real quick. So I'm going to sport punch it up. Okay. Remember, I have no ND filters on this right now. This is just raw. And the sun. Let's just get about 200 feet up. The sun is coming from this direction, but it looks like it's handling it well. Let's take a few photos of this concrete plant right here. Hey, using the Action 4 hat cam and it hasn't overheated yet, that's good. Remember the Action 2 was overheating when I was trying to do the Air 3 test here. So you can click on anywhere in the screen. It will focus, it'll give you a little tone. Um, and we can also zoom, remember? So on the right roller, you can just push to the right and you can zoom in three times. But do you see how it's a little bit blurry because it's digital zoom? Let's go down a little bit, see how the camera handles this. Hey, some trees are starting to turn. Cool. So I'll have the um, rough footage up there in 4K so you can kind of see what the you know, resolution, resolution is. I'm gonna go back to two times. Let's go up and down a bit, see the clarity. It looks very clear on the screen, which I'll be recording for you too. The screen I'm seeing on the controller. We'll go all the way back to one times. And this is variable too, that right roller on the controller. You can see how slow I can zoom in. That's about as slow as possible. And you can ramp up ramping up, turning it more and more till max. So it's a little notchy in between zoom levels, but not that bad. That's great, man. So let's just start taking some pictures. Remember this has um, this portrait mode, which you can't hit if you're recording video, right? We only have six minutes left. So let's do this real quick with some pictures. Stop recording, hitting that shutter button hitting the top film clip, going into photo. Okay. And I hope it's gonna take 16 by nine. I'm not sure if I changed that, but let's just try to take a photo here. So there's one. Let's take some photos in different lighting situations. Two, up at the sky. Three, now these are just regular photos. Let's point down. Boom, four, 
here's all your options here guys these are all the photo options I went over this in the unboxing so I'm not going to talk about it too much a B time shot burst in single mode and remember we also have these pano shots so you can do a full 360 shot which takes forever so I'm not going to do that right now over on the left we have different things 180 wide angle vertical I click on vertical What's it going to do? It's not using the true vertical cam right now. It's just going to take three shots. Let's do that real quick. So see that pop up? Battery low. Uh, i got to get my recorder out of the way. It's trying to return to home. I'm going to stop it. I just stopped the whole thing because we're in the middle of shooting pictures and I know it has enough power left. Um, and remember, we launched right where my bag is on the grass so we're gonna see how that handles the return to home as well I just want to do a couple more pictures here real quick come on come on come on what are we doing uh, let's do a portrait so it turns the whole camera sideways right guys and let's take a let's take a photo move let's face away from the Sun here and take a photo so Instagram posts cool you can take photos like that so it has all sorts of stuff for the camera, right? I'm not going to go through them all, but you can see all this stuff. We're going to test out some more of this on, the, on another battery. So let's do a return to home real quick, just holding in the hardware button. And let's see how close it lands to its home point, guys. I'm loving the home icon and that green little virtual column. That's so cool. So I'm not going to get super close because I, I have the optical avoidance on right now. But I do want to see how close it lands to where I launched. Now I don't have a landing pad out there, keep in mind, because I just wanted to do, show you how it is with test catching it. But that's, I mean, that's right about where we launched. So at least you're getting back there. I'm going to push up keep it from landing but if I let go it's still in return to home it's gonna still try landing I'm gonna reach in and grab it let's see if it tries to avoid my hand yeah see so it will not land it says make sure the landing area is safe if you want to can catch reach in real quick grab it and that's how you can like launch it if you're like on vacation you're launching on the side of a cliff or maybe an area where you really can't, you know, set it down and have a flat area, like a rocky shore, on a boat, whatever, you know. But man, phenomenal. So we still have 12% battery left and I will have the full flight time on that video, how much this flew for. Uh, it seemed like around 30 or so minutes. I could never before get caught in a canopy like that and it found its way out. It would just stop because it didn't know what to do. So this is phenomenal. They're upgrading stuff really, really good. We're gonna also do a tracking test, remember? Like a road with a forest around it. My Mavic 3, my Air 3, both crashed into the same tree. We're gonna see if this one crashes in. So stay tuned and subscribe, guys, because that's another video in itself for tracking on a bike, on a skateboard. And I'm gonna try to get a car in there too and see how it is following a car. Let's slap in a new battery. And I wanna try some just tracking in an open area like this, you know, for a person maybe walking or running and see how that works and also test all the other features. So let's get a new battery in here. The only thing about these batteries is you can't check them until you put them in the craft and then it shows you you're fully charged. You can tap it once, check out how much is charged with those four lights see how it can launch from this hey no problem it was on the edge of that bag and it still had no issues come up to eye level here yeah we're good 97 percent power on our battery the one thing is it won't move out of the way guys if you're going next to it right so if anybody walks up to it that bypass isn't going to work the bypass will only work if the drone is moving like a kid walks into it it's not going to move out of the way okay so be very careful now these propellers are you know Let's tap the thumb here. Ow. They're not going to cut you, but it hurts because they have those rubber things. Maybe if you held it for too long, it might cut you. But it's still going to hurt, but it's a lot safer than other drones that have pretty much sharp blades spinning. All right, guys, so let's try some tracking, man. To start the tracking, all you do is 
click and drag a box around the subject and then let go. So this is where I got some flack from my last one. Um, you can use Spotlight as a tripod, but what I forgot to say is you can also move the drone around however you want, which yes, the guy, the guy that commented on this um, is a really good feature as long as it stays and keeps tracking you. So it's tracking me very good, but watch what I can do. If I try to move the head, nice, just like the Air 3, I can move the subject around, but it will not go out of the screen. So if I needed to adjust my center, if I wanted a shot that made it um, a little off center just because, I can do that. Let's see what happens if I pull the gimbal up and down. Same thing, so pulling the gimbal down, and it is readjusting but keeping the subject in the screen. That is fantastic. Now on the bottom you see on the screen it says spotlight with that eyeball. This is what's great about this mode is I'm gonna just control it like I would normally, just pulling back, sideways, forward. So you can do orbits manually, just like this. Let's see if it hits that tree. <laughs> uh, moved in front of it a little. Let's try that again. That wasn't a good test because I was too, too far in front. Let's try this. So moving to the right and it will nail that tree. It's stopping. Getting a little jerky. Okay, so bypass wasn't able to do anything with that. You see how we have that red arc on the right of the screen on the controller? It's just too much in the way. It's not gonna do anything. If we inch it out towards the front of the tree a bit and try that again. Okay, where it will still hit it if it didn't have obstacle avoidance. Let's go to the right. Nope, so too big of an object, guys. And it really doesn't want to go any closer than this for its um, spotlight mode. I'm pushing full stick forward. Let's see how far down we can go in spotlight. And it will still track. I don't want to land it. But if I keep pulling down, it will not land because it knows it's in this mode. Great. Let's see how we can orbit on a very low level. So orbiting in spotlight. And I'm going to pull out. See if it'll hit that tree. Whoa, oh my gosh, did you see that? That was great. That thing was flying around the corner and it just stopped right before it hit that trunk. So it stopped about two to three feet. So that would have just ruined your day. <laughs> well, let's get out of here, okay? And let's go back up. So this is what's great about Spotlight is you can just move this thing around anywhere you want. And as long as it keeps tracking the subject, Let's see where it loses uh, tracking, okay? Go out this way. Now I'm a very bright figure in a grass field. I do have a black shirt on, but let's see how high and far it can go until it loses track. Maybe they improved it a bit. Wow, yeah, we're higher than the air was. Is it still tracking me or did it just put a location? Yeah, I'm walking and it's still tracking. That's great, man. So it does seem like they improved that quite a bit. You see that little icon? It's still on me. That's great, man. All right. Very, very nice. So I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it is kind of cool. Let's keep going back and up. Oh, there, it kind of lost me. That was interesting. So that's the conundrum sometimes if you just go too far. It lost me around 106 feet. And I was kind of jerking it around. So, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt. But that's the kind of limitations with these drones. Let's get back in front. Come on down. Let's try some different tracking, guys. Of course, it's going to help if the sun is like on you like it is now. Um, it'll try as much as it can to track in shadows, but let's go ahead and circle the subject again. Remember, just clicking and dragging. Boom. So it automatically goes into spotlight. You can start and stop recording, take pictures, whatever you want to do in this mode. Uh, let's go into active track and then we'll do a POI. 
tap go and it will follow the selected object automatically. So this is great too because it's not only is it tracking you, but you can also move the drone around. You can go back, you can go up, you know. So it's like spot like spotlight mode, but tracking a moving subject. Whereas spotlight is, I mean, it won't follow. It'll just stay put, but still track. I don't know if that's kind of confusing, but <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. All right, so this is great. So tracking mode, no problem. And we're going to be testing a faster tracking. I'm just going to do a little quick jog. Turn back. Yeah, so I a little juked it there. So it will, you know, as much as it can, keep track of the object. Let's try to go right over head. I can't push forward anymore. And that's, just, that's really as uh, close as it wants to get. So let's just try this real quick. I'm going to try to juke it to lose it. Juke back. It's trying, it's trying. No, see, so, yeah, yeah. I don't know what people were talking about. I had some comments that some people weren't able to lose the drone now. But so see what happens is it just kind of loses you and you got to redo this. So I'm a little worried about a fast tracking with a bike or a skateboard on this one. But we're still going to see how it works. Let's gain the subject again. So that's active track for you. And if you have it in bypass, it'll still try to avoid objects. Okay. Let's try that real quick. Go active track. I'm going to run. I'm going to keep it this level and I'm going to go under this tree. Okay. Let's see what it does. I'm just going to go right under this tree branch. Hey, it went under, that's awesome. Tap here to expand the trace wheel. All right, well, that's great. Well, at least they, they notified you now on how to do it. Tap on dot or draw a route and aircraft will fly designated route. Cool. Just focus track settings. Okay, you can. So see this little man on the bottom left? I'm gonna click on him. They didn't have this really uh, identified before. If I just click on front F, check that out. So it's telling me it's route, trying to get around me. So this is great. This is kind of like the little Skydio button where you could um, track front, left, right. Can we also just draw it? Yeah, so I can keep my finger on it. And we kind of have two separate levels. Do you see the, how it like moves to the notches? So I'm gonna go in to the left, closer to the left. So at least you can tap that. Seems to be doing good. Let's come in a little closer. And let me try to lose it in this. So running a little bit and then, hoop. Hey, that was pretty good. Kept track of that. Great, and it's gonna remember, it's gonna try to get back around to the left. And this is what we're gonna try when we're riding a bike and doing obstacles okay guys so stay tuned remember stay tuned for that video what look at this so i'm moving left and right and i can still move the drone around as usual and it will still try to track so running at it now it's staying in front of me you see that little point on the man on the left is in front so all these kind of cool things you can do man that's great Let's try POI. So hitting POI, let's hit go. And this is where it's just gonna do a point, it's called point of interest tracking. So it's gonna keep track of me and it's gonna fly a circle as fast as I tell it to. It's slow right now. I'm gonna push all the way fast to the right. You can go right or left. Let's walk into this tree, see what it does. <laughs> oh, he's pushing the limits, right? Come on, baby. Let's see it, let's see it. Ooh. It went right past the tree. <laughs> Where are you going, bud? Wow, that tree really flew it off, uh, threw it off. Let me go a little closer. Okay, okay, tree. Run forward. Whoa, okay. 
Yeah, we're trying all these different things with it, making it, trying to make you hit that tree. Let's try again. Pull back. Uh, 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 uh. Yep. You saw it kind of swerving back and forth, but it did not hit the tree. That's great. So remember in the olden days, that would have just smacked into the tree. But now, it moved forward to bypass it. Great. I'm just gonna give this thing another try. I just like to test it multiple times. I know it's redundant, but what's it choosing to do? Okay, that time it stopped, flew around it forward and kept going. Fantastic guys. We're getting all the high-end drone functions now on the mini and this little tiny compact drone, man. This is so cool. We got some great tracking in and we have 56% power left on the top, 19, almost 20 minutes left for flying. Here's what I wanna do. I did this in the last test. I'm gonna fly over to this little canopy area, active track, go. And I wanna move my little slider to the front. Remember on that little menu, you can do that. That's a great feature. I never even tried that before. I'm gonna walk over here into these trees. Let's try to walk right into this pole. Let's see what it does. It's swerving back and forth a little bit. Going under the trees. Ooh, it just nipped. Okay, there we go. It nipped a little branch. It nipped this right here. But it really is trying. It avoided everything in there. Now this is an enclosed area, so that's actually really good. Let's try to come back out of here, see if it can follow. Trying to find a route. Wow, it went all the way around, didn't hit any more trees. That's great, and it's gonna try to get back in front of me, but it doesn't know which direction I'm going until I move. So remember, if you wanna get out of the tracking, uh, all you do is hit that little X by you or whatever you're trying to track. And that goes back into normal mode, won't track you anymore. While we're kind of here, check this out, let's do this. We can do automated flight. I know we only have 11 minutes left to fly, but I just clicked on that left little curvy line on the screen right here. You can turn it on and off from here. And you can add waypoints either manually or by clicking the buttons down below, right? So I'm gonna do a waypoint here and you don't have to do it this way. You can actually do it in the map if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna show you two different ways of doing it. So this is the first way you can do it. You can fly to your destinations, just so you make sure it's open and it's not gonna hit anything. So this is like a real time um, waypoint planning, right? So we'll do our second waypoint here, do our third waypoint over by that tree. Let's see if we can avoid that tree again. Yep, <laughs> I didn't have to worry about hitting that. That was so cool. And we'll come on back. That was cool. It flew up and over that time it chose to fly up on that tree. So bypass is working very well. We'll do a final waypoint here. You can also do POI. So I'm clicking on POI. But remember, you have to link your, your POI points. So let's go ahead and just save this flight plan real quick. You see how that pops up, we can save it. And we'll go back. And we're finished with our flight plan, let's hit next. And at the end of flight, I want it to return to home. Well, you can change your global speed. Uh, you can choose each thing, what to do, signal lost. And then you can start at whatever waypoint you want to. So let's just do this without the map first and press go. And let's see what the camera does. I didn't tell it to do anything with the camera, so it may just stay there. So it's starting at the waypoint one. And there you go. Yep. Okay, it's slowly turning towards the waypoint, which is cool. So it went through waypoint two. Now it's going Oh, obstacle detected, waypoint flight suspended. That's what everybody was wondering, guys, if you can do waypoint flight without hitting an obstacle. And you, you can, but it won't go around. It's, it kind of turns off bypass. So very, very good to know, okay? 
I was wondering that as well. I had never tried that before. I just did one that was super high up. So that was interesting, guys. So let's try to go in the map here. There we go. I do want to bring up the satellite maps. So that that's kind of, that's my only gripe too, is look at the maps. They're kind of blurry. And I can't zoom in farther than this. I wish I could. But here's another way you can plan waypoint missions. And you don't have to be flying, okay? Once you save a map, you can go into it and you can keep altering it. So you see how I'm just clicking here and doing waypoints? So you can do that, but remember, it will stop if it hits or notices an obstacle. And then for each waypoint, you can click on it. You can trash it if you want. Remember, you can adjust all the settings, global speed, which way the camera's facing, trash. You can also go back here and it will just trash them. See, I'm just pressing the back button on the bottom. Okay, at this height, I wanna try that again. I wanna see if it hits that tree, okay? Or stops at that tree. So it takes a little while to get started. See, I was just sitting there, like trying to think what to do. So if you don't put any camera direction or any height direction, it will just stay at the height it's flying. Let's see what happens when it gets to this tree. Yep, yeah, so same thing. Let's come on back. I think we kind of did that to death already. <laughs> this thing seems like it's flying for a long dang time, man. Awesome. Okay, so it's returning to home. I interrupted the waypoint, but check it out. It wanted to finish it and return to home. Let's see how close it lands to that bag. After all that, that's pretty far away. So I'm going to stop it. I'm just going to click the home button that time and just stop it completely. Do so you see how far away that is? Uh, that's a good six feet. So not really precision landing, but what I'll try in the next one guys is go directly up and let it sit there. Maybe it needs to kind of see its location, right? So we'll try that in the next one, but you know, we're, we got five minutes left to fly. So you hear that return to home beep? You can hear it on my mic. Say you don't want to hear that. Double swipe down, can't turn the return to home beep lower. You hear that? But you can mute and you can turn that off. We weren't able to used to do that a few drones ago, but you can do it now. Let's go ahead and just let this battery completely empty itself and see how, how long we can stay up. This will be a good trial. Oh, it's low battery landing. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. It wants to land on its own wherever it is. Because we hit 11%, so I should have known that. Um, but look at what it's doing. So if it hits 11% and you don't put any input in, it's gonna try to land wherever it is very, very slowly. See how slow that's going down? But you can put in, put in. This is what happens in my range test because I push it to the limit. You can put in, put in, and you can move it all around, right? As far as you wanna go. But just keep in mind that once it reaches a certain extent, it's just gonna land. So, Maybe I'm kind of ruining this battery a little bit, but that's okay. For the sake of the test, I'm gonna see how long this thing can fly until it will automatically land, okay? And let's just really see how much flight time. These are the plus batteries. These are claimed to fly for 45 minutes in perfect conditions, which you never have. So, you know, and we're also, remember we were recording a lot in 4K, which I'm not anymore, but that'll also use some power. So likely when you're not recording on the camera, let me just show you that real quick, the portrait. See how that camera twists? Portrait on and off, pretty cool, huh? So that's what it's doing. It's true vertical or portrait mode. So I'm pushing up a little bit just to keep it hovering. Critical low battery. Hey, guess what? It's letting me just not push the button anymore. I guess it figured out I don't want to land yet. So 5%, just gonna keep kind of flying around. Oh, now it's starting to land again. 
As soon as I pushed forward, it started to land. That was weird. So I'm just gonna keep it up, keep slowly flying around 4%. So this is what's great about these drones is it keeps a reserve, but it will not fall out of the sky when the battery is empty, okay? So I'm literally just gonna keep flying around until we're all the way depleted. Full stick forward, let's go down that way a bit, maybe use up this battery more. So I'm in normal mode, remember guys, it's gonna fly slower when it's close to the ground anyway, in whatever mode you're in. So it's gonna keep going down even if I'm going forward. Let's see if it'll hit the ground if I go forward. Yep. Ooh, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's like a last ditch effort, right? It'll hit the ground going forward. It looked like I was getting super close. So just keep that in mind. Zero percent. What's it going to do? Look at the screen, guys. It's zero percent and it's still flying. So it should fly to a certain voltage real quick. Let's check the battery, 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 battery. Where are you? Uh, battery info, boom. It's still at 3.25 volts. It will still try to land. I'm just gonna keep this voltage up on the screen. Wow, okay. Are we ruining this battery? You tell me. It seems like it would have landed already. I think if it was Definitely on a return to home it would have landed, but I'm just manually keeping this thing up. Let's see what it lands at. My gosh. We're flying. Oh my gosh. It seems like any other DJI drone would have landed by now, but look at this. Zero percent, zero time left. Okay. Dropping quickly. Remember, I'm keeping it pushed up. Okay. Um, so, one cell's below three volts, guys. I can't even go forward anymore. Look how slow, I can go barely forward. Oh, that's because I was standing in front of it. <laughs> All right, for the sake of this review, guys, I'm ruining this battery because we're under three volts. Oh, there we go, pushing up. No way it's gonna fly, and look at that voltage. So 2.6 volts, it's gonna shut down as soon as it lands on that. That just automatically shut off. But at least we know, man, you can push this thing under three volts, so possibly ruin this battery, you know? Don't try that at home. I'm gonna need to get this thing on the charger right away. Guys, we got one battery left that's fully charged. So here it is. Like I said, not sure if I ruined that battery, but that thing flew for so long and I will have had that flight time up. Let's put the last battery in and I wanna do some master shots. And I think that's gonna wrap it up. Hey guys, check it out, back in action. This is the third and final battery. Again, this is a freaking long video, but it's very informative. I'm going to put on and be switching between some of the ND filters here. This was the ND filters I got. Now, some people were confused. These are separate. They don't come in the Flymore combo. They should be available on the DJI site. So wide angle lens and the three ND filter set. I thought this would be kind of cool in the bright sun here just to switch them out while I'm recording. Main thing is just look at the video, right? Coming from directly the drone, the 4K. Um, probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm just going to change it right here while the drone's on to give you that instant difference. So here is the ND16, uh, there we go. So that's the ND16, okay? Not a whole lot of difference, but it's gonna give you a little bit of a different effect. Take that off. Remember, this is gonna be the raw lens again. It's pretty good actually at keeping its um, brightness adjusted and automatic. I'm not gonna do the 64. I'm gonna go straight to the 256. Really, DJ, just, just give us a lens cleaning cloth with this stuff, right? You know, all this stuff is sensors, cameras, 
you need to clean it. Take a look at the field here, nice and bright with actually no lens whatsoever on. Okay, there you go. That's with the 256 ND filter. Okay, so that gives you a direct comparison between the two. And now we're gonna do the wide angle lens. And we put it on the same way. I did this on my unboxing, so if you wanna see the more detail, you can check it out. But you're basically just turning it a little counterclockwise till it fits in the notches and then boom clicking it on. Let's fixate it right here. You see that uh, white house on the right? That's with the white angle where the white house is. Taking it right off. So you see that? The house came out of view. So with that white angle, there. So that's what the white angle will do for you. So I'm gonna leave this white angle on guys and we're gonna launch this thing back up. So it shut itself down. So this thing will overheat if you leave it too long in the sun. So you're not going to want to be letting it sit here out in the sun or in a hot area and like planning your waypoints. You're probably going to do your waypoints at home in the shade. This thing has to kind of be on to plan your waypoints. That's the thing. It doesn't have to be flying, but it has to be on. Let's do an auto launch quickly. Went back a little on that one just because it was kind of off balance. But I'm going to give it a benefit of the doubt on the return to home precision and I'm gonna slowly lift it up to about, before it was like you had to go up 30 or so feet. I'm just gonna let it sit there for a second and maybe take pictures of the ground or whatever it has to do for possibly more precision. Okay, now remember guys, we have the wide angle on. Cool, man. So let's fly over here. And what we're gonna do here is, look at that wide angle now. That's pretty cool, huh? Look how wide that is, wow. I'm gonna put the compass on here. So remember, you can do maps or compass just by clicking this little uh, corner, right-hand corner of this little screen on the bottom left here. So compass is great because it shows you which way you're facing. So you see the little home in there that's the yellow. This is how all their drones are. You can see that little arrow I'm turning left to right. It's going to turn bright green if I'm facing at the craft is where I want to be facing for the best signal. And then also if I turn the drone, check out the drone, it will turn the whole compass. So the compass is based on which way the drone is facing. So I'm basically facing south with the drone right now. So I'm going to get a little closer here and we're going to try some master shots with this wide angle lens. Yes, we know we're max altitude. Okay, so I'm going to scoot over to the left here. So remember, you can do all kinds of your tracking without doing the quick shots or master shots as well. You know what I mean? I'll just touch on that really quick. I'm still seeing my home point on the bottom of the screen. Seeing that down there? That's great. That's a great addition. I'm just going to be right outside of this concrete factory right here. And... Um, I'm going to kind of drag a box around the structure and I'm going to leave it in spotlight. I'm going to put it in sport mode and I'm going to just swing it. Let's go a little closer. I'm going to swing to the right as hard as I can. So this is sort of a manual point of interest. So my sticks full to the right. We're in sport mode. What are we moving at? 26 miles per hour, okay? So at least you can kind of do these cool manual... Max altitude oh, reached. I keep trying to go up, but we're already pretty dang high. Doesn't seem like we're that high, does it? I think because it's going uphill there. But check out the video, guys. So that's the video we're getting. I'm gonna scoot around to the not so dark side of this thing because it's winter time and the sun is remember it's more south in the sky well it's not winter it's ending of uh, summer i should say we're entering um, fall so here we go so this is without any nd filter that's interesting that time check it out when i hit it put it in sport mode if you look at the top right, all of the um, obstacle avoidance sensors are off. So that's interesting. When I was down low, they were on. So maybe it's kind of a height thing. I don't know, but they're off now. 
That's interesting, very interesting. I'm gonna switch back into normal mode and so we can turn our obstacle avoidance on just in case there's some kind of poles around here or something. And we're gonna do a couple of these master shots, guys. So you can't get into it unless you turn off your recording. Let's zoom in real quick. That's fully zoomed in on three times. Hey, there's my little home icon over there where the park is I'm at. That's so cool. And let's just see the resolution. So that was three going back out to two. You can see that little orange number there by the uh, record button right over here. And remember, if you want better focusing on a certain distance, you can click parts of the screen, which is really cool. So that's two times, check out the resolution. And let's go back down to one times. So of course you're gonna get the best resolution on one times. Oh, that was weird, it said image blocked. And remember, this is the wide angle lens. So this would be cool if you're trying to get a big area like this, but you wanna be kind of close to it, you know what I mean? So we have to stop recording. And then we have to click on this film icon again and we're gonna go into quick shots. So I think what I'll do actually, is you see how we have all these quick shots here on the left? Droney, rocket, circle, helix, boomerang, asteroid. I'm just gonna do a few of these that aren't in the master shots and then I'll just do a master shots, which kind of combines them all. Since this is higher up on the mountain and we're not over, guys, our altitude of 400 feet above ground level, I'm gonna open that up, all right? I'm gonna click on asteroid. Oh, so it detects the wide angle. It can't do an asteroid in wide angle. That's cool, that's interesting. At least it lets you know that. Let's just try a boomerang real quick. Okay. Three. So these are shots like, One. You know, if you guys didn't really have good manual control of the craft, right? At least you can do these little things. This isn't a great uh, example of how to use boomerang. Boomerang is better for just like going close to you, close to objects and farther away. But it just does this like fly up and out kind of spiral and then it flies back in. But you can work with all of these. Uh, oh, image transmission is blocked. That's interesting. So see how I'm, I was facing like to the left? And if you look at the bottom left, it was telling me that in, image transmission is blocked. So I need to turn myself to face the drone again. So I'm looking at my compass and I'm making sure my green arrow is right at the drone. So boomerang is still giving us kind of a cool effect here. Look at this. I didn't really want it to fly over this thing, but it doesn't look like anybody's around there, so it should be okay. But wow, so we're getting, we're do, we can do gigantic boomerangs. But this is really good to know. Look at this. It's doing a complete route. At least it's still doing it. So it's kind of like circling around that center object in sort of a close to far spiral fashion. See if we can zoom in while we're doing this. Nope. So it doesn't let you touch the zooms or anything. Don't want to touch the sticks because it'll probably cancel it. So you just kind of want to leave it. Don't touch anything if you want that full video. Let it do its thing. Just shutting off the hat cam, save some power since we're not using that right now. So let's let it go ahead and finish its uh, boomerang. And remember, it's, court, it's recording the video, so I'll have that video up of the actual final product. And what it normally does, it speeds it up, so you get this cool sped up circle effect, right? So I think that's the one that the Master Shots doesn't have. The Master Shots will do a combination of these. So let's do a Master Shot. So let's drag again on that tank and we'll just start on the master shots and here you go you can click here and you can do you know medium of everything you know you can do small like come in tight 
or you can do large, go, go, go further out. So I'm just gonna do medium, check. You can adjust those three different options. So start. Three, two, one. Keeping in mind, looking up at my power, still have 21, 22 minutes of flight time. Uh, I am still at 58% battery, so doing very, very well. So this is a good instance of this thing trying to get its transmission through these trees. If you look in front of me here, there's a skate park, there's a chain link fence, big old trees. There's a bunch of stuff between me and this um, concrete plant, right? There's houses and shrubs. And so I have the antennas facing that way and it's still kind of low, but it's three bars still. If you'd look at the top right on the RC, the orange three bars. So we're still getting a pretty good transmission. Um, but anytime you're line of sight where there's no obstacles, you're gonna have the best. And that's what we're gonna do for our range test. But this gives you a good idea at, you know, three, 3,500 feet away is where it is. Oh, look at that. It's doing roll and fly, that's cool. Look at that effect. It's flying forward and doing like a FPV roll type of deal. That's awesome. So at that distance with all this stuff in between, it's still good. We still have good image transmission and control. Um, it is showing the height is over 400, but it's not that high over here, guys, at this concrete plant because the hill slopes up so hard. So look at this, it's doing a zoom function. This is neat. Very cool. Zooming out. That zoom looked pretty dang clear, actually. You guys tell me what you think, remember, in the comments to make sure that uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing here or if you want something for me to test that you haven't seen in this video or others, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do that on another video. It's always good to do what you guys um, suggest as well. You know, doing in a rocket now, going up. So you see what the Master Shots does. I mean, a lot of you guys that have flown drones for a while know all this stuff and it may be boring to you, but for you newcomers or for you guys that haven't used these modes before, I think this will be really informative for you. So this is interesting. It, it's doing the rocket, it went up. Now it's getting a completely different area. It's not getting my subject at all. Um, I guess this is just part of the, the rocket or part of the master shots feature. And you can see how low it's going now. There we go. Complete, guys. If you wanted to see what you shot right away, you go here on your media and you can actually watch that. I'll have had it up on the screen for you guys. So this is all we've been doing today. Look at all these things pop up. So you can actually watch them and it tells you kind of what it was. Let's just watch the boomerang real quick. Play. Yeah, that's actually in real time. It's not sped up. So it kind of gives you a real in field preview of what you shot. That's great, man. So we're kind of done with all of these master shots. Um, obviously I can't use, let's see if I can use pano with this wide angle. Nope, see that on the bottom it came up unable to use pano can we do hyperlapse yeah hyperlapse is kind of a cool thing so um, we could do let's try a hyperlapse circle on this it's kind of their way of calling a time lapse something else so as you can see as you move up in the time lapse you want to take it's going to take a long time and it's going to pop up to say you have enough battery or not and it tells you right above it how long that's going to take because it's taking frames right so i'm going to do a five second video i'm going to speed up the mile per hour a little bit you can do a maximum of 6.7 so let's do that and let's just let it rotate the way it wants to okay so pressing record here on the right and it immediately starts okay 
So, wow, my image just got super weak. That was interesting. So what's happening is this factory is blocking my signal. You see how it got super weak and now it's back to normal going in and out. So this thing will just kind of take the pictures like this guys for, you know, four minutes and something seconds. And it will do just do this video time lapse, which they're calling hyperlapse. Uh, remember, I have the wide angle lens on there, so it should be kind of cool. So what I'll do is I'll just put this up so you don't have to wait three to four minutes for this. I'll just go ahead and put it up for you so you're seeing what's happening. Um, so we don't have to wait through this whole thing. For this one, doesn't look like it's going to fly all the way back to the start point. Remember, I was way over here, so I'm going to get out of here and get back over to where I was so I'm not kind of flying over this Battery building. Level unnecessarily aircraft will return to the home point in 10 seconds all right so perfect timing it wants to return home a cool thing guys was when i was doing that hyperlapse at 30 seconds left it told me hyperlapse is about to complete so if you set the controller down next to you it reminds you 30 seconds before so that's pretty cool i want to take a quick real quick portrait shot of this okay Boom, with the wide angle. So that's the wide angle with the portrait shot. We go back, go back to video, and let's record our flight back home, okay? So this one, I'm just gonna hold in the return to home hardware button. Return to home. And cool, there's our route again. Very cool. So remember when we're in normal mode, returning to home. So a lot of new upgrades that they've done even since the Air 3 on this software. And once we get home, guys, and we see how um, accurate it was, remember I launched right off this case, I haven't moved anything. I'm gonna stand back so it doesn't throw off the optical avoidance. And we're gonna see how close it lands to its launch point, okay? While we're coming home, I wanna show you this real quick. So you see how you have this option? Bypass options, normal or nifty. I wanted to show you the advanced RTH, optimal or preset. So optimal, it'll kind of start coming down sooner than when it gets over to its home point. And so it kind of saves, you know, uh, battery power and gives you a more optimal path home. Otherwise in normal, it'll just fly directly overhead to the point at the fixed altitude you have returned to home, or if it's higher, it'll stay at that height and return to home. Uh, and then it will just come straight down. So I like leaving it in optimal and you'll see how it's starting to already come down. That's so cool how it's following that like virtual little column. You'll see how it's starting to come down and adjusting its altitude already before it even gets over the home point. So lots of cool stuff in this Mini 4 Pro. So it's just overhead now. It's saying landing to me and it turned the camera down on its own. So I'm gonna get out of its way. Let's see how close it lands on. The, okay, that's way better. That's cool. It just did the camera up on its own that time. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Let's see if it can land on that case. Oh, <laughs> so not recommended to you know launch and land on something like this but at least it shut itself off. Before I shut the controller down, guys, I just wanna show you, it looks like I'm right around half power and you can check that by swiping down once. You see that little bar on the top? So those three batteries, all that flying, I still have 33% on this RC2 controller. I think I was in full brightness. Yeah, so full brightness, full volume for the majority of the flight, okay? So we didn't push the limits on that one, but we did for one battery, remember guys? I gotta say, it seems like it's got precision landing. I went ahead and just very slowly brought it up to about 40 feet, let it sit there. So that's precision landing to me. That was maybe only a couple inches off and that's why it tilted forward. Again, I wouldn't recommend <laughs> launching or landing on something like that. If not, just launch and land in your hand. You saw that too, it's very simple. Phenomenal flight, guys. I know it was long, so sorry about that, but it was long for a reason, right? We touched base on so many things. We now have a home point reticle. 
in the FPV screen of where our home is and it will change across the screen. We have that cool column effect of where it's flying. It's like it took it out of sport mode if I had it in sport mode to do that tracking, but at least it does that automatically. You know what I mean? It puts it back into um, obstacle avoidance mode. So that was kind of cool. But the thing that impressed me the most was when I got into the trees over there, I got way into the woods, down under the canopy in a hole where it would have been really hard to get out myself. It tried to go up, couldn't find a spot. It turned itself, it moved itself until it could find a hole going forward or laterally. And then it vertically came out. I've never seen a DJI drone do that before. So they have updated the software. I'm gonna have to visit the Air 3. Or if you guys know if the Air 3 can do that now, go ahead and leave a comment down below if you've tried it or have seen somebody who tried it and let me know if it's kind of the same. But I remember testing the Air 3 when it first came out at my house and it would stop and it would come up on the screen unable to return to home obstacle. But this thought it through and did it. So amazing technology that they're implementing now in the Mini 4. And remember, these things are tiny. So you guys tell me what you thought about the video, all the things we went through. I think that was incredibly thorough. I really don't know what to say negative about it. The only negative thing, okay, was when we were doing uh, waypoints, it's going to stop at obstacles. So it doesn't look like yet. Hopefully that's a feature they can improve soon. It will not fly around when you're doing automated flight, which I'd like to see, and we probably will in the future. It seemed like it could go around obstacles better when you're coming straight down versus straight up. These are improved cameras definitely to give it that 360, but it still doesn't have 360 bypass in hard situations. It needs to see an opening if you're pushing the stick in one direction. If you don't push the stick and return to home, like I was saying before, it will on its own find the route and get out and up and return to you. So that's a phenomenal advancement. We saw the wide angle lens too and some of those ND filters in real time, switching them out, seeing what the difference they made. Of course, it was just on the ground, but at least you could see how it dealt with the sun. It's super quiet, super light, super small, super advanced. Oh yeah, also the overheating. So it's gonna overheat in sun. There's no fan on this to keep the weight down and to keep the power drag down. But that's the second con on this is it will overheat if you let it sit there in the sun. It's only about 80 degrees out. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that first initial maiden flight test on the Mini 4 Pro, a phenomenal drone. These things aren't entirely cheap, but for around $1,000, you get this entire setup and you could bring this anywhere and just have a blast with it. If you did like it, guys, down in the description down below, uh, go ahead and check out the link below the video in the description of where you can get the Mini 4 Pro and the other peripherals I've shown in this video, the wide angle lens and the ND filters and stuff. And also what I'm shooting here, I was surprised that this Osmo Action 4 from the same company, DJI, did not overheat once today. So that was great. The drone overheated, the camera did not. So that's an upgrade on the Osmo 4. I'll also have that in this description down below. And don't miss the series on this too. If you're looking for other videos, I did an unboxing, this is the flight test. I'm gonna do a range test next which will be really cool to see how this thing does. Check out up here on the top right, or also I'll have the series down in the description. And I will see you guys in the next one.